Chances are, if you own a motorhome, you're probably bringing a vehicle along with you, whether it's a car, a truck, or an SUV. Today, we're going to show you how we bring our vehicle along with us. Doug, thank you for joining us as we follow the moon. Today, Kathy and I are going to show you how we bring our toad along with us as we go down the road in our motorhome. There, first of all, is three basic ways most people will take a car with them, or a truck or an SUV with them, as they go down the road. The first one is trailer towing. Now, trailer towing is where you have all four wheels up on a trailer and some vehicles that's necessary. Rear wheel drive vehicles, four wheel drive vehicles that don't have a neutral transfer case like a Jeep. Um, those type of vehicles have to be towed with all four wheels off the ground. A lot of all wheel drives like you'll find in SUVs have to be towed with all four wheels off the ground. Uh, rear wheel drives uh, like Mustangs and Corvettes those have to be towed with the rear wheels up off the ground, so you end up having to tow them on a trailer, whether it's a flat trailer or an enclosed trailer. The second way you'll see is dolly towing. A dolly is where you pull your vehicle up onto a two-wheel dolly and strap the, the vehicle to it so the front wheels are off the ground. That's a great way to tow for most front-wheel drive vehicles. There are some disadvantages to it. It's a little bit more difficult to see where you are. And with the, uh, the tow dolly, there's more parts strapping down the vehicle. You have to stop periodically to check to make sure the straps are tight, that the vehicle stays secure on the dolly. What we chose to do was called four-wheel down towing or dinghy towing. Some, some will even call it recreational towing. That's where all four wheels of the vehicle are down on the ground at the same time. Now each one of these takes its own special set of equipment. Ours uses a Blue Ox tow bar and a Blue Ox base plate on the front of the vehicle. First we're going to show you how we prep the vehicle for towing day. Well this is the day before our move and the first thing that we do is I get our car ready to be towed. Now, one of the reasons we went with Blue Ox was it left a nice clean look across the front of the car. In fact, from a distance, you really can't even tell it's set up for flat towing. But to get it ready, all you do is remove a little plastic cover. Take this piece, which is what engages into the tow bar. Press it in and then give it a quarter of a turn and it's ready to go. We'll do the same thing on this side. Press it in and a quarter of a turn. And that's all ready. The only other thing that I do the night before to the tow car is I take our RVI tire patrol and I put our tire pressure monitors on the valve stem of the tires. Now we've got more on this system in a video that we published before. I'll have the link up here in the corner for you. But these are just simply as easy as picking out RF for right front, unscrewing the valve stem cover, and screwing on the new one. We'll do that to the other three tires and we're all set the night before and ready for towing tomorrow. Now that we've got the tow ready to go, we're going to go ahead and pull the motor home out and show you what it is to connect the two vehicles together and to get the brake system ready to go so that you're completely legal in all 50 states and compliant ready to go down the road.
Now while the motor home is airing up and getting ready to move, I wanted to talk to you a couple more things about towing. First of all, one of the biggest disadvantages to towing uh, four wheels up on a trailer or towing with a tow dolly is when you get where you're going, you've got a trailer or a tow dolly to deal with. Either moving it into your space, backing it into your space, always making sure you have a pull through, and some parks won't allow you to keep them at your site and make you put them into a storage area. That's one more advantage of dinghy towing or recreational towing, towing with all four wheels down. The, uh, the equipment is a one-time thing. A tow dolly makes sense if you've got a car you're going to be keeping just a short time. Putting the expense of putting a base plate on the car makes more sense if you're going to keep it for the longer term. The next thing is making sure the vehicle you're looking at or that you have can be dinghy towed or recreational towed. Now, it's not just a matter of manual transmission versus automatic. There are many vehicles out there with automatics that can be towed all four wheels down. Vehicles that have a, a neutral position in their transfer case like Jeeps and most pickups, those can be towed with all four wheels on the ground. Um, there are some vehicles with automatics like a Ford Fiesta you can tow with an automatic transmission all four wheels down. There's also vehicles like a Ford Focus with an EcoBoost. The manual transmission cannot be towed all four wheels down. There are great guides out there for dinghy towing. You can research them online, but your best bet is check the owner's manual for the specific model year and the specific model and drivetrain that you're wanting to flat tow. That tells you what the manufacturer says you can and cannot do and that's kind of the definitive answer of what you need to use. Well now we're getting the motor home moved out into position and we're going to start getting everything hooked up here. Now we've removed the cover off of the um, tow bar and the first thing we're going to do is just rotate the tow bar into the up position and then lay the tow bar down so it'll be moving out towards the car. And I like to move it out with the two arms extended and kind of stand straddle of it that way. Kathy brings the car up to me and that way I can help guide her to make sure that we're getting the car in there as straight and square as what we can. Now those tow bars telescope, but I want to bring the car up pretty close so that we're not ending up with being too far away that they won't reach and you have to move the car again. I'd rather bring it up a little close like what we just did to make it easy. Now this little cable attaches to the breakaway switch which we've got mounted behind the grill. And if the car were to break away while you're going down the road, that would pull a switch out of the box and would automatically apply the brakes to the vehicle. That's a safety feature that's required. The little electronic switch. We're going to connect that to the motor home here in just a moment. The next thing we're going to do is actually attach the tow bar to the car. You'll see it shows up. They only go on one direction. Rather than just having pins with a cotter pin, I use Blue Ox's locking pins and they're on the hitch, they're on the drop hitch receiver, and they're on both of the bars on the car. The reason I use the locking ones is if I were to stop at a Walmart for the night and I'm just using a, a pin with a cotter pin in it, 
Somebody can come up during the middle of the night while I'm asleep in the motorhome, pull the cotter pins, and roll my car away. This way, it's secure to the motorhome. Those are both attached and we're firmly connected between the two, but we're not done yet. This blue cord we'll get to in a moment. These are the safety cables and the safety cables crisscross underneath the tow bar. The reason they're crisscrossed and the reason they run underneath is to form a cradle so that if the car were to be separated they would support the weight of the hitch and it wouldn't drag the ground. Now we connected the breakaway switch to the motorhome and this blue cable is for all the lights. So your brake lights, tail lights, turn signals are all ran through that cord. Those last two things, the breakaway cable and the uh, light cable, those go on top of the hitch so that the tow bar is supporting the weight of those. Now those are the two latches and Kathy is going to back the car up slightly and we're going to see if one or both of those latch. You want them both to latch but normally only one will latch. The one on the right just popped up. It latched. The one on the left you can see is not latched. So what she's going to do is turn the wheel towards the side that isn't latched and we'll move the motorhome forward and it will latch. We'll show you that in a moment. Now this is the brake system. It's made by RVI and I'm going to be quiet for a moment and let you listen to how the setup works on this. We've attached to the brake pedal we're plugging it into a dedicated 12 volt plug and this is for the breakaway switch. Okay, now we're going to check the lights. First thing we're going to do is check the tail lights, then the brake lights, then the left blinker, and then the right. Next after that, we're going to pull the car forward just a little bit to make sure that the to make sure that the uh, hitch locks and it has now locked. So we're ready to roll. Now as the motorhome and our toad come past, I want to thank you all for tuning in today and I hope it's been informational for you. Uh, if it is, please give us a thumbs up and like this video and uh, subscribe and ring the notification bell if you haven't already. I want to leave you with one last tip that nobody told us and I wish they had a long time ago. But every now and then when it comes time to unhitch, you'll end up with one of those hitch pins that's bound in there and not only have I seen it but we've been hitting them with a hammer before and all you have to do is turn the wheel and it'll free it up. Turn the steering wheel all, of your, all the way one way if that doesn't do it turn it all the way the other and you're all set. Happy towing!
Thank you for watching this video. We hope you've enjoyed it. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel and be sure to ring the notification bell so you'll know when we have new videos listed. Also, be sure to check out our blog at followthemoon.us and also our Facebook page at followthemoon and on Instagram at followthemoontravel. Thanks.